These people all experienced unusual side effects from common and not so common diseases. In 2015, one man's blue eye changed color and turned green overnight. The culprit? Ebola. It happened to an American doctor who thought he'd beaten the disease. It's such a pleasure to be here with you this morning. That's Dr. Ian Crozier. He was diagnosed with Ebola several months earlier in the African nation of Sierra Leone. After being treated at Emory University, Dr. Crozier was pronounced cured. He talked about the disease at a lecture. Lung failure, kidney failure, brain failure. Inside Edition's Stephen Fabian has more. No Ebola virus was detected in his blood. Everyone thought he was cured, but then came the shock of his life. Just two months after being given a clean bill of health, he developed inflammation in his left eye and began experiencing severe vision problems. Dr. Crozier woke up one morning to discover that his blue eye was now green and his pupil was dilated to over twice its size. Tests revealed his eye was teeming with Ebola virus. When I read this report, it was, wow, this is something I never thought would have happened. Former CDC director Dr. Richard Besser said it may change the way we think about Ebola. We've never had a chance to see what happens when someone has Ebola and recovers. Do they get rid of the virus or can it hang out? A number of other Ebola survivors have also experienced after effects. Stephen Fabian spoke to an NBC cameraman who contracted the virus. I've never heard of someone's eye color changing, but it's a very vicious disease, so I'm sure there's a lot of problems that are unforeseeable, and these are the things that people are learning now that there's a much wider pool of survivors. Nurse Nina Pham recovered from Ebola, but still experienced liver damage, severe pain, and hair loss. Could other people who've survived Ebola develop the same kind of eye problem? How do you treat this? How do you look for it? These are all unanswered questions. Hair loss may be related to COVID-19 as well, as Alyssa Milano shared in the summer of 2020. I just wanted to show you the amount of hair that's coming out of my head as a result of uh, COVID. One brushing. This is my hair loss from COVID-19. Wear a damn mask. And the charm star is not alone. I could pull out here right now. There you go. 54-year-old Teresa Cabrera was hospitalized with COVID-19 in April of 2020. I'm doing it. Here, she was on the road to recovery, taking her first steps with a walker. Then she started to lose her hair. It sheds all day long. If I put it up in a ponytail, it comes out. If I brush it, it comes out. It just, but in the shower, it comes out the most. Mounds would come out, mounds. Teresa showed how much hair she'd lost just the night before speaking with Inside Edition. I brush my hair and all this comes out. Dermatologist Angela Lamb says the hair loss is not a direct symptom of the virus. It's actually brought on by stress. It's really caused by a condition that we know about in dermatology where people lose their hair after a stressful event, and a virus is a stressful event. Fortunately, it's not usually a permanent thing. The hair does grow back, thankfully. You will get your hair back usually within about four to six weeks. This is my hair loss from COVID-19. In early April of 2020, CNN host Chris Cuomo shared his COVID-19 side effects. This virus came at me. I've never seen anything like it, okay? So yeah, I've had, a, I've had a fever, you've had a fever, but 102, 103, 103 plus that wouldn't quit. And it was like somebody was beating me like a pinata. And I was shivering so much that I chipped my tooth. And these are not cheap, okay? And they call them the rigors, like rigors, R-I-G-O-R-S. Cuomo says he even hallucinated seeing his late father, former New York governor, Mario Cuomo. I'm telling you, I was hallucinating. I, uh, my, my, my dad was talking to me. Um, I was seeing people from college, people I haven't seen in forever. It was, it was freaky what I lived through last night. And it may happen again tonight. In June of 2020, we met a Utah man named Matt Newey who lost his senses of taste and smell to COVID-19. Whenever I eat bananas, it's super strange, but it, I, I have no desire to eat them anymore. It makes me gag because whenever I eat them, you imagine eating a tasteless banana that's just kind of goopy and sticky. Matt was diagnosed with the virus in March, but months later, he still couldn't taste or smell. 
They said there may have been some brain inflammation going on and it may have caused pressure on the part of the brain that senses taste and smell. One side effect of that side effect, he lost 20 pounds. I miss being able to enjoy food. Um, like, like I have no appetite. It is so hard to get a meal down. Finally, in 2017, we met Shelby Smith. She had always been health conscious. I hadn't been sick in forever. It'd been years. So when she showed up for work and started feeling ill, her coworkers were concerned. She was shivering and so cold and didn't know why because she was getting a fever. Her temperature climbed to 103 degrees. Shelby had strep throat, but she figured she'd just ride it out. She didn't have health insurance and didn't seek medical help. Unfortunately, things got worse. My nose was turning blue, almost purple. Her boyfriend, Caleb, called 911, and Shelby was rushed to the ER. I thought that I was losing her. Yeah, that was the most terrified I've ever been in my life. Shelby's heart, lungs, and brain were failing. I would say that I was as close to death as you can be without dying. The untreated strep had turned into a sepsis infection. Her fingers, feet, and toes were turning black. It looked like I was turning into a witch, honestly, like a creepy witch you would see in like Hansel and Gretel or something. Like they were completely black. To save her life, doctors were forced to amputate fingers on her right hand, as well as a finger on her left hand. Two toes were also removed. Her stepmother couldn't believe it had all just come from strep throat. It was just very scary. I mean, we could have lost her for something so small. Thankfully, Shelby recovered and then had to learn how to adapt to her new reality. Her occupational therapist gave her an ultrasound massage to reduce swelling and improve mobility. She's surpassed my expectations already. Shelby says she feels lucky to be alive. Every day I see this is a reminder that I have a second chance at life, you know, um, because I could be dead. This is Inside Edition Digital.